line right now is uh, the man the man who earned those flag pants we talked about last time he was on uh, uh, back from Japan just a couple of days ago, if I'm correct. Uh, Johnny Gargano returns to the Wrestling Mayhem show. How you doing? I'm good, man. How about yourself? It's been a while. Yeah, it has. It has. Uh, and of course, we'll get into uh, what you've been up to recently. But, uh, you know, big, big accomplishment happened last week. Of course, we had our yearly uh, Mayhemies Award show for this, po- uh, the finest, finest, uh, 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 you know, award show in podcasting, I- I- I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> but uh, you, you, sir, uh, beat out the entire year. Such greats as we, we were saying, Jerry Sags, the Nasty Boys, uh, even Mike Quackenbush, uh, your second interview with us at the Chikara Fan Clave. Uh, <laughs> Puppet Christopher Daniels. Puppet Christopher Daniels. Uh, I don't remember the guy's name from Japan we talked to. Uh, but you won best interview of 2010, sir. There you go. I'm gonna pat myself on the back. I uh, I started off the year. I got my interview was so sweet that it, nothing could top it all year. Look at that. That's pretty impressive for myself. Uh. I like to thank all the little people. Uh, I think that's cliche to say. All the little people, like Gregory Iron, uh, he's smaller. Uh, I like to thank him. Um, uh, who's, who else is small that I can I can thank? You don't necessarily uh, have to thank Puppet, but <laughs> that's the only other one I can think of. You can only thank little people in in, in like uh, acceptance speeches. You can't thank anyone over like five foot. Okay. Uh, how about how about Hornswoggle? Seven? Can we thank Hornswoggle for this one? Is it, did he play a part in your uh, greatness? I I think. Uh, what about, about the midgets that will doink them? Um, Dink. Good. Dink. I think that's about it. Uh, <laughs> I can't think of any more little people. So we'll thank the midgets that were with Doink and Gregory Iron. Uh, that's just like a good couple of people to thank. <laughs> I think that's a good start. I got a good start. Good start. Well, oh, here's your uh, here's your bid for the 2011 award, sir. Let's uh, kick it off. Good. Start right now. I'm starting it right. I'm now. a little late though. It isn't January. But, it is. Uh, it is. It isn't January. Well, March, no, oh, it's yeah. not January. Oh, no, January. it's not January. Yeah. I don't know today, it's man. To, I like, go to Japan. I come back and it's January here. I mean, what I don't know, a lot heck? of crazy oh, stuff happens. <laughs> so, Thor, you gotta stop drinking the whiskey. I do, you I do. I'm me. sorry about that. Um, uh, well, well, first of all, I say you're 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 uh, uh, just a few days off from coming back from Japan. Uh, you know, I talk, you know, we talked to you, tried to set this up before you you left, of course, and a lot of the crazy stuff happened uh, on the world scale. Uh, well, I guess uh, the first, you know, you tweeted out, you let everybody know you're all right. Uh, I guess the first question is, uh, on your end, where were you and, and how did it affect, uh, uh, your trip over there? Uh, I was, I mean, we were okay. We, we were in, uh, Osaka mm-hmm. and Kobe and all those places, uh, which were roughly like seven hours or something away from where the earthquake hit. Like, I got a bunch of emails saying like, oh, are you okay? Okay. I was sitting there on my laptop. I watched like a ton of movies. I watched like Inception and like Black Swan, which is effed up, mind you. Black Swan is really, I couldn't even fathom what was going on in that movie. Uh, I concur. I was in there watching all those movies and uh, I get a bunch of emails asking if I'm okay. And I had no idea what was going on because like we didn't feel anything where we were mm-hmm. uh, until we looked up. There was a massive earthquake. Uh, we found that out. Uh, but where we were, nothing happened. I mean, uh, um, it's funny because like uh, I got all these emails and Rich Swan, who I was with, uh, says like "We good," and I was like, "Man, I'm gonna tweet that." So I tweeted out, "Rich Swan says we good." Uh, funny thing is, uh, Chuck Taylor uh, wrote out this like kind of nice, kind of like correct uh, tweet saying like, "Oh, like people in Japan were okay, like nothing's going wrong." Uh, Shima wrote out this like correct, like "Oh, everything's okay," and I of course tweet out, "Rich Swan says we good." And that one, that tweet somehow made every single uh, wrestling publication um, on every wrestling website, the, in- the politically incorrect Rich Swan says we good uh, tweet made it out as, as opposed to all the actual nice tweets. I don't know how that happened, but I, I yeah. laughed at that. I mean, it's short and sweet. That's, uh, that's Twitter. It was we easy good. to retweet. We good. We good. Uh, but yeah, where we were, nothing happened. Um, of course, like with everything going on with the radiation and stuff like that. And our last two shows were supposed to be in Tokyo. Um, the final show of our tour was supposed to be in, uh, 
arrived with the Sumo Hall, and that was uh, the big Compilation Gate pay per view in Tokyo. Uh, but because of like the rolling blackouts and all the radiation and stuff like that, there's supposed to be 11,000 people there. They had to cancel that show. That's like almost their WrestleMania. Um, so they had to cancel it. So we were very disappointed about that. And we actually went home uh, five days early from the tour because they wanted to get us out of there as soon as possible, just in case mm. you know anything went down. Crazy, crazy. Uh, so, uh, I mean, was there was there a lot of? Um, I mean, you know, we're we're filtering through here. I don't know if you've caught up with any of the news and how they've been reporting it here. Uh, but I know there's a lot of us, uh, kind of misreported stuff. It, it makes it sound like the place is, is really kind of in turmoil right now. Uh, it, it is, is the ripples of that kind of going throughout the country? Did you feel? Uh, it seemed like, uh, people were being pretty, uh, cautious of everything. Uh, when we flew out of the Tokyo airport, the Tokyo airport was just packed. People were trying to get out. Um, and luckily for us, we were at the Tokyo airport all night. Our travel day basically consisted of, because we got flown home early, we were supposed to, uh, as soon as the compilation gate pay-per-view ended, we had like a 6 a.m. flight to go home. Mm-hmm. Um, and we'd be in Tokyo already. But we were like seven hours away from Tokyo. So what we did was we got on a plane at 8.30 p.m. Thursday night. Uh, we flew from Kobe to Tokyo. We landed in Tokyo 10 p.m. Thursday night. And we had a nine-hour layover in the Tokyo International Airport. For me, uh, Chuck Taylor and Rich Swan basically just run rampant in the Tokyo airport. Um, also, uh, the convenience stores in the airport were just bare. They were dry because everyone is like taking food and, uh, stocking up on it just to make sure nothing else was wrong. So all the convenience stores were just bare. Uh, nothing was in it. Uh, Rich Swan was doing backflips. Uh, random Japanese people were staring at him, probably scared to death because you don't see a lot of his type in Japan. We saw at least one, probably one other black guy and that was it. Uh, so they're probably scared to death just looking at that guy. And then when this big earthquake comes, and now they're seeing this little dude running around doing backflips, a different skin color than they've ever seen before, they're probably freaking out. Uh, but we had a nine hour layover in Tokyo airport. Uh, we got on a plane at 6.55 a.m. Friday morning, uh, had a 12 hour flight. We landed in Detroit at 5.53 Friday morning. Uh, we basically time traveled, and I had two Fridays. I wish it was my birthday. If it was my birthday, I would have had two birthdays. But uh, it wasn't. And I just had a uh, 42-hour Friday instead. Excellent, excellent. I, it's, uh, well, aside from that, I mean, you were over there with, um, of course, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Dragon Gate. Uh, yeah. And, and then how, uh, you know, other than all the craziness there, uh, how was the tour? I mean, uh, is it, of course, is this your first time, uh, with Dragon Gate over there? Yeah, this was my first time, all of our first time touring for Dragon Gate in Japan. It was awesome, man. Uh, you can't help but, uh, get better and you can't help but, uh, just raise your game when you're wrestling with some of the best wrestlers in the world on a, on a nightly basis. Um, mm-hmm. it was awesome though. Uh, it was an awesome experience and, uh, hopefully we can do it again many more times in the future. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, I say we, we, it's been, it's been, uh, you know, well over a year, uh, since you've been popping up on a lot of feds that we've been, we've had our eye on. Uh, of course, you know, you're a mainstay in, uh, AIW, PWO, Pro Wrestling Ohio. Uh, but you've also, I think you were just starting to get into, uh, Evolve, uh, Dragon Gate USA, which I imagine, uh, uh led you to this tour. Uh, and Chikara, we were, we were pleased to see you on the King of Trios, uh, weekend when we traveled out for that. Um, can we uh can we can we can we pretty much uh presume that all of this was from the amazement of the uh Johnny Gargano Power Hour? I'd like to think so. Uh I guess that that made people realize that I'm kind of semi a little bit entertaining sometimes. Uh and people should put me on their shows to maybe be kind of entertaining sometimes. Uh so I'd like to think that's what happened, but uh I think the Power Hour ran its course. Mm-hmm. Um you never know. It could come back for maybe one or two episodes in the future. But I think uh, it was good for while it lasted. It uh, it got very tedious. I like to point out. Um, and then when it first started, like it was fun. Then like as like you know, I think there was what ten episodes mm-hmm. when like it started getting like, oh man, I got to do another one this week. I got to come up with more material, and I got to come up with another thing that's funny. And then it just got like, oh god, this is gonna, and it got hard to do. Uh, 
I, mean, I think it ran its course and it was good for uh, what it was. It was different, so that's cool. Excellent. Uh, what do you think of uh, some uh, some kind of copycats? Uh, it seems like a lot of people are. Scott Hall has his last call show. Um, Zack Ryder, who's even in the WWE, uh, seems to be going this route as well, since we don't see him on Monday nights, at least. Uh, you know, what, what do you think about this whole, like, everybody kind of latching on to the YouTube and, and doing their own thing? I like to think that Scott Hall directly watched the Power Hour and directly ripped it off. Um, <laughs> that's what I'd like to think personally, because I'd like to think Razor Ramon uh, knows who I am and uh, cares about what I do, because that'd be awesome. Uh, uh, I guess, you know, it's the future of professional wrestling is YouTube and online and stuff like that. And uh, that's what you got to do. You got to promote yourself and you got to get stuff out there. I mean, um, you can have a billion hits on YouTube, and that's that's pretty good for getting your name out there. Uh, so I mean, it's cool. I mean, hopefully Razor Ramon stole that idea from me. That'd be awesome. <laughs> so we'll see. Fantastic. Um, and kind of uh, other other guys uh, in TV. Uh, Matt Cross. You know, uh, we we we've seen a lot of you guys uh, around the area, especially your your big match in uh, Resolution this past year. In uh, Cleveland, Ohio, I was fortunate enough to be there to see the craziness that was that match. Uh, you guys were literally battling on the rafters, up in the stands, everywhere. It was crazy. Uh, I recommend Pro Wrestling Ohio. Pick up that DVD, find it. You know, it, it's a great match. Uh, he he just recently got picked up, and I think they just finished filming uh, Tough Enough. Uh, you do you have any uh, 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 thoughts on that? Are you looking forward to the show and see, seeing how he's doing? Yeah, man, I'm pumped. You know, I'm, uh, if, if there's anyone who deserves to make it, if there's anyone who deserves to get that chance to be on television, it's, it's Matt. Matt has worked hard for a very, very long time. Um, and he's good. He's really, really good at what he does and he deserves it. And, uh, he deserves this shot. He deserves a break. And I hope it works out. And I hope, uh, hopefully he gains a lot of stuff from this and hopefully gets a contract and I can watch him on television every week because, <laughs> Like I said, if there's one guy, I've always said this, if there's one guy who deserves a break in this business, it's Matt Cross. Excellent. Excellent. Um, we have a few fan questions I definitely want to get in here, uh, including one that just came in. Uh, Uh-oh. Oh, yeah, this this actually just came in right before we got got on to you, uh, got on with you here, uh, from Indie Wrestling Icon, I think is his name. Uh, he asks, is it true uh, to to you uh, is it true he now glows in the dark and can uh, cook a hot dog just by holding it? Uh, does he have any other Fantastic Four powers? Uh, and he tagged it in his email, like on Twitter, I guess. Uh, uh, Gamma Ray's rule. Um, I do. I I might have radiation. I may have that. I'm not sure. I have the new power of dislocating my thumb in and out from the tour. Uh, I don't think that is a that's a stuffy superpower. Um. But I mean, look at the positive. If I have kids eventually, they're probably gonna have an extra brain. Okay. Uh, so that's that's good for them. They're gonna be extra smart. Um, Mike Quackenbush actually emailed me and said, if I have superpowers, he's gonna be really jealous of me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think I th- hasn't he on? Uh, he does that one show, the what the Grizzly Big Bear Egg Cafe. Yeah. Do, haven't yep. they speculated on what superpower they'd like to have on that show? Or maybe I'm thinking forecast or something else. I'm sure they have. I'm <laughs> sure Mike has. Oh, I'm sure of it. But uh, my dad already. My dad, when I got back, put me said he put me in a dark room and I didn't glow. So that's a good sign. All right, that's, um, good. that's good. So that hasn't happened yet. It might still happen in a couple years. Mm-hmm. I don't think there's any short term effects, but long term effects we might see. Mm-hmm. Definitely. So you know, keep an eye out for that third testicle and such. So yeah, um, Probably, yeah. I've, I've been I've been checking on a daily basis. Mm-hmm. Every minute. Superpower. I just checked five seconds ago. You mean hourly basis, right? No, a minute. Every every minute. Every minute. Yep. Just you can't see my hands. It's just another excuse, right? I mean, <laughs> you don't know what my hands are doing on any of this computer. That's true. Oh, oh, ah, worst has happened on this show. Uh, <laughs> we did have Jimmy Demarco on here. That's so, uh, it's a, f- a few more questions here. Uh, uh, big freaky, always a big contributor to the show. Oh, uh, oh, yeah, yep. Of course. <laughs> 
Well, he was mad we didn't answer. We didn't ask some of his questions last time, so I think he recycled a few. Um, he was uh, really interested in in, in uh, uh, us asking you about uh, your experience and and any memories uh, you'd like to share about Cleveland All Pro and, and your time. Uh, I love Cleveland All Pro. It was a uh, is where I first started. Is where I got uh, my break at. Is where I got to wrestle guys like Alex Shelley in uh, big matches. Nigel McGinnis, uh, Christopher Daniels, Zach Gowan. Um, I loved it there. It was fun, and it helped me grow as a wrestler and grow into the wrestler that I am today. Excellent, excellent. Um, and he also we we've been discussing lately. Uh, we had Jay Garrett on a few uh, weeks ago, and uh, you know, we, of course, we've been so you know enjoying TNA lately. Uh, and one <laughs> one quote that came out of that discussion was that TNA is a glorified indie. You know, and stuff like that. Uh, now, we, we we heard reported that you actually had a tryout with TNA. Uh, can you kind of uh, speak to that and what your experience was uh, with, with your time there? Yeah, that was like a year ago. Uh, I think it was, it was right. awesome, though. I, I, I liked it. It was fun. Um, it was a big opportunity for me. And I, wore, I wrestled Jay Lethal and I wrestled Eric Young. Uh, both, I like the, I like the Jay Lethal match a ton. And everyone, uh, also liked it. Everyone in, in like, uh, the office loved it. And they loved, uh, my character and they loved the charisma I brought. Mm -hmm. And, uh, they wanted to try and write something in for me, uh, that didn't end up happening. But, uh, but funny story, that didn't end up happening, but I ended up, uh, if that would have happened, I would not have wrestled for Dragon Gate USA and would not have gotten an opportunity to go to Japan. So. Mm -hmm. Everything yeah. happens for a reason uh, in this business. Um, one door shuts, another one opens. Um, but everyone was awesome in TNA. I love the uh, backstage atmosphere. Everyone was really supportive of one another. Um, and a lot of my friends wrestle there. Uh, so who knows? You know, uh, the Young Bucks wrestled with Dragon Gate in Japan and then went and signed with TNA. Mm. Uh, and Young Bucks are awesome. They're good guys. Um, so you never know what could happen eventually. And that not was... only uh, not only talking about uh, your trial at TNA, uh, maybe that didn't go through, but you did an absolutely amazing job uh, holding back Daniel Bryan on uh, an episode of NXT um, since we last started off with you. How was that um, uh, being a part uh, in a way with uh, WWE? Oh, uh, it was cool. Michael Cole called me, and I know him for a while back, and he said he had problems with this Daniel Bryan guy, and uh, <laughs> he knew I fought him uh, before he came to WWE. So I was called upon to uh, to stop Daniel Bryan from taking out my friend Michael Cole, uh, <laughs> and I think it did a very good job. Actually, I didn't because he got away from us, and it was scary. <laughs> uh, he's very fast, very fast, and he's very strong for uh, his size. Uh, but after that happened, it's funny that Dan uh, Bryan got released, and it ended up wrestling him in AIW in one of my favorite matches ever. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, everything works out. Nice. Now, did he wrestle you in AIW because you prevented him from getting to Michael Cole? Yeah, he was really upset. He he requested that match because uh, <laughs> I, I stopped him from beating up Michael Cole. He wanted to take it out on me, but he couldn't do it because we ended up drawing. It was a 30-minute draw, so I'm one and a half against the best wrestler in the world. I beat him <laughs> once, and then I tapped him, so uh, one and a half. Always have that under your belt. <laughs> Um, I think this is I think this is a directed to you from the chat room and maybe there's some pretense to it I don't know. Is Alex Wright still sending you videos? Uh no, I got a restraining order against him. Oh good. That's yeah, probably for the best. <laughs> I got a restraining order, I call my lawyer Clarence Mason. Um he got a he filed a restraining order against him. Uh he hasn't bugged me for a while. He sometimes sends me the odd, you know, email from like a different address. And I'm like, I know it's you, Alex, right? I'm not replying like, to this one. Like Berlin uh, at gmail.com. So. Yeah, Berlin at gmail.com. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, he's not fooling anyone. Hmm. Excellent. Like, uh, we, do, we do have another question in the chat room. Uh, from from uh, The Wolf, 87. Uh, we mentioned WWE. He asked, uh, who would Johnny Gargano wrestle if he was wrestling at WrestleMania? Uh, Shawn Michaels in an Iron Man match. I have Shawn Michaels come out of retirement and wrestle me in an Iron Man match. Try to top the one uh, Bret Hart. Yeah, because that that was one of my favorite memories as a kid, uh, watching that match and going crazy when Shawn Michaels Shawn Michaels or Bret Hart. Because uh, I was like a huge Shawn Michaels fan growing up. As you can tell, he's painted on my wall for God's sake. 
Uh, <laughs> but him or Chris Jericho. Chris Jericho was another one who uh, is a big uh, inspiration for me. And it was awesome because uh, um, before I went to Japan, Chris Jericho actually tweeted me and said, good luck and have a great tour and work solid. Wow. Uh, wow. which was awesome for me. I arrived, I like, landed in the, uh, Detroit airport and I checked my phone and I had like a direct message from Chris Jericho. And I was like, what the F? Like, this is crazy. Um, but it was awesome. Like, that was, uh, it made the trip even sweeter. Like, it made me look forward to the trip even more than I was. Very cool. Uh, Bobby of J-Town, uh, also asked in the chat room, uh, who is the best technical wrestler you've ever wrestled in your career? Um, some of the best, uh, one of the best, like, uh, chain wrestlers and guys like that was Alex Shelley. Alex Shelley's amazing. Uh, he's helped me out a ton in my career, too. Um, but he is, without a shadow of doubt, the best chain wrestler I've ever wrestled. Uh, the best overall wrestler I've ever wrestled. And this isn't just his gimmick. It's Brian, Brian Danielson. Uh, someone asked me what makes him the best wrestler in the world, and I could not answer that. Uh, you just, once you're in the ring with him, you know. Um, once you're done wrestling him, you know. He's without a shadow of a doubt the best wrestler in the world. Yes. Excellent. Excellent. And speak, oh, speaking of Danielson, I know that um, him as well as uh, Cole Cabana are coming out with the uh, new Wrestling Road Diaries DVD. I, I'm told you do make an appearance in that uh, DVD, uh, Wrestling Danielson, I believe, in the AIW show. I do. I believe they were filming it when I, I wrestled him for the first time. Uh, I saw the trailer and I saw me for a second of it. Uh, so that's awesome. I'm looking forward to that. I, like, even if I wasn't in, I'm, I'm looking forward to watching that because that just looks like it's ton, tons of fun, uh, with the way freaking Colt is and the way Brian is, uh, it looks like it'd be highly entertaining to watch. Excellent. Excellent. So, um, so, you know, aside from that, where are you working, uh, currently? Like I said, you've been around a lot. Uh, where, where, where are people going to be able to find you here in the coming, in the coming months? Uh, this Friday, I'm wrestling at AIW in Cleveland. It's me versus Ricochet. Uh, uh, I just, like, Ricochet is also, uh, wrestling for Dragon Gate in Japan and stuff like that. So we know each other very well. And it's going to be quite the encounter. I can promise you that. And then after that, uh, April 1st, I am in North Carolina taking on Shima for Dragon Gate USA. April 2nd, it's, uh, Ronin versus the Blood Warriors in Atlanta, Georgia, WrestleMania weekend. And April 3rd, it's Dragon Gate USA again. Uh, for me, we're Rookie Doi in Atlanta, uh, April 9th. It's CCW Best of the Best. Um, that big tournament they do. April 15th, 16th, and 17th is the King of Trios. And April 19th, it is Evolve on Tuesday night in New York City. I can only, I can only presume, uh, you're excited for Stan Bush being at the fan clay this year. <laughs> I am. I'm pumped with the fan conclave. I love the man, fan conclave. Man, you can sit and play Get Who for. Two hours. <laughs> <laughs> with, with, I, did, with, with I did believe you did play with one Mayhem Missy last year. Yes, I did. I played. I played about I'd say seventy five games of Guess Who in a row. Uh, <laughs> you do not know the type. The, you do not know um, what it takes out of you to play seventy five straight games of Guess Who. <laughs> you just are mentally and physically drained. After you do that, uh, I think there's got to be like a limit set on how many games you're allowed to play. Because I was I was ready to go to sleep for about 48 hours after I played that many games of Guess Who. Especially after probably having a match that night for night two. Yeah, like it's that's, it's that's I was not. So, oh man, I regretted that decision in the morning. Well, okay, uh, was it the old school Guess Who? Guess Who, or was <laughs> it the new politically correct Guess Who? I think it was the old school one. Okay, so. If you ever want to do that again, all you have to do is just make, like, 23 copies of the black guy card. That's true. <laughs> and then give them that deck to pick from. And you, true. you'll just fly through the 75 games. I think the secret is you got to ask which color eyes they have. Because only a certain number... If they have blue eyes, I think they're screwed. <laughs> <laughs> you should, next yeah. year, you should really just, like, take a, take a picture of yourself, put it as the Guess Who card, and then you'll beat every single person because you can just, you know, be yourself the whole time. I just start cheating and guess who on the fan conclave. I just start freaking putting money on that freaking fan conclave guess who game. Exactly. <laughs> make some, but, uh, make make some stuff on the side. Yeah. Also, also speaking of uh, Chikara and the King of Trios, they announced uh, 
your first round match uh, for the big King of Trios event with um, you teaming with Fist, making your um, first uh, King of Trios appearance with Fist. Uh, you'll take on, I guess, uh, Team Australia. Um, Team Australia. I don't know much about Team Australia, except they're from Australia. Hopefully. I don't know. One of them has like a gas uh, be mask. Care- don't bring any with- babies. I hear dingoes eat them. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I'll have to watch a lot of Rocco's Modern Life to prepare for uh, this matchup. Perfect. Yes. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, that'll prepare Throw you. Throw laundry at them. I hear laundry is a very dangerous day over there. Is it? <laughs> of the, I don't know anything about Australia. <laughs> How did Mad Mike learn uh, learn all this Australia? Did you watch like a National Geographic special or something? No, you watched my Darko. Sis- no, my sister and dad were just there. Oh. Okay. They told, and I have a boomerang. I own a boomerang, and I and I did just realize that you're wearing bananas on your shirt, Mad Mike. I am. <laughs> I don't know. In if you... honor of our guest. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, oh, there you go. that threw me a little bit. Uh, we do have one question from the chat room here. Uh, from Bobby FJ. Or did, uh, is Brian Danielson a level seven vegan? Uh, he is a vegan. Uh, <laughs> I went out to eat with him any uh, a couple times. Uh. And he is a straight up vegan. Uh, he does not eat any meat or anything like that. And uh, it's very hard when you're picking out like places to eat because you know he can't eat everything. <laughs> so not Burger um, King. Does he have any telekinetic powers? Does he have any telekinetic powers? He not might. A He's vegan. a very good wrestler. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe right. he's not a good wrestler, and he just convinced me that he is through telekinesis. Uh, <laughs> you never know. I, I did see him miss a top rope spot uh, at the dark match last night, so uh, maybe he got a little bit of burger in there. <laughs> Who do you wrestle on the dark match? Thanks, bitch. Uh, it was uh, no, I'm sorry. It was well, it was superstar, so it was dark to raw. But, yeah. Uh, no, he had a oh. he was he was tagged up with Gail Kim against uh, um, Zack Mal- Ryder. Zack Ryder and Mal- no, no, Zack Ryder's in the opener. No, uh, I think it was uh, Tyson Mal- Kidd. Molina oh, yeah, and Tyson was, Kidd. Yeah, Tyson How do you, Kidd. You weren't even there. You're in Texas. I, you I were tweeting things. it. I read things. I read things. Oh, I was tweeting things. it. Yeah. I was tweeting it. You okay. were tweeting it. So, yeah, that's right. Zack Ryder was the first match. Yeah. Yeah. Tyson Kidd and his crazy hair. <laughs> <laughs> speaking, well, actually, segue here. Speaking of crazy hair, um, I know one uh, Johnny Gargano has uh, has a new do that he's debuted. Um, over, there it is. Over recent weeks, uh, tell us a little bit about that. Uh, it kind of looks like Sonic the Hedgehog sometimes. Uh, I know you were looks- getting those comments about that. Sonic the Hedgehog, yeah, it looks kind of Sonic the Hedgehoggy. Uh, I basically, uh, uh, my mom cuts my hair because she's a hairdresser. It's not just because, like, I'm a weird dude who, uh, was like, Mom, cut my hair. No, she's an actual hairdresser. Uh, <laughs> so I was like, hey, cut my hair and let's try and do something different with it. And she just cut it until I liked it. Uh, there was no real <laughs> rhyme or reason behind it. Uh, it was like, cut, 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 uh, go to the, look in the mirror. Uh, okay, cut more. Here, here, here. It basically ended up looking like Sonic the Hedgehog. And I was like, you know what? I just do it, and uh, I rock it out, and uh, there you go. Sonic the Hedgehog. So long as you're not uh, uh, growing out that that one long hair like Matt Cross had for a little bit. Though. Oh, I didn't I'd never do that. that. I didn't. I, I didn't get that. I don't. Matt Cross has probably had every hair style, every beard style in the history of ever. So. <laughs> oh he yeah, did a, he did have a very impressive beard. He did. Yeah, he yeah. he showed up in IWC one time, and I thought he was what like that uh, grizzly redwood or something yeah. from ROH. I'm like, what? I was like, they might not give birth. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, he was uh, kind of crazy. Fantastic. Well, uh, well, uh, you know, we usually DJ Lunchbox in here is is here and uh, and uh, he likes to ask the big question. And uh, this is something like I say I reviewed from last last year, and I remembered Wait, one. I remember he's gonna ask you to marry him or something. No, 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 no. Not that big question. <laughs> a big question. Not the big question. So okay. uh, we talked a lot, and I think we discovered uh, during the course of the interview that there's such a thing as Power Ranger birthday parties. So uh, in, yeah. this, in this past year, did you have a Power Ranger birthday party, or do you plan to in the future? Uh, hopefully in the future. I did not yet. Uh, I can't even remember what I did for my 23rd birthday. I think I'm 23. Yeah, I'm 23. Uh, <laughs> I can't even remember what I did for my 23rd birthday. But I don't think I did anything... Spectacular! I think I sat at home by myself and freaking watched Man vs. Food. I think that's what I did. <laughs> uh, 
I should have had a Power Ranger birthday party. I invited them over just for myself. How weird would that be if those guys just came over and I was just sitting here by myself, just like <laughs> I don't care. Power Rangers. Uh, it'd probably be a weird job to have. Like if it's like because you can, I can call them and just have them here, and I'm like a 23 year old dude. Like they can't be like, yo, look, 23 year old dude, we're not Power Rangers for you. They're gonna have to be Power Rangers for me because I paid them. But that's a weird, uh, wow. weird job. To have. That would make a great YouTube clip. Just call the just Power call Ranger Power guys Ranger. up. Answer the door. The Power Rangers? No, just uh, answer the door. You're a 23-year-old guy answering the door for the Power Rangers. Yell, it's morphing time, and shut the door. They should hire You're them. <laughs> so you should... also have to order some putties as well. Uh, they should hire them as uh, a King of Trios team at Chikara. That, that'd be amazing. Or dress up like Lord Zed. Call the Power Rangers and attempt to... <laughs> You've fallen into my trap. <laughs> what was that? Things get real quick when a Power Ranger gets shanked. <laughs> yeah. uh, fantastic. Uh, Johnny Gargano, thank you for joining us. It's a pleasure as always. And hopefully it'll be not over a year before we get to talk to you again here. Hopefully, man. It's been always fun. It's always a good time to be here and uh, do all that good stuff. Excellent. Hey, you got any base of operations where everybody can get those dates we were talking about? Uh, find me on Facebook. I'm on there. It's like facebook.com slash the whole shebang JG. Or you can just follow me on Twitter. I'm mildly entertaining sometimes on Twitter. Uh, yeah, you can have your own Johnny Green on Power Hour in like a hundred and what is it, 20 or 140 characters or less. Uh, it's uh, <laughs> a good tagline. So it's a great tagline. All right, thanks. And uh, for everybody else here, we got a little bit of Wrestling Mayhem Show Gold preview for you. We'll be right back. This was Stan Bush.